This is a timeline of the history of the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC. Topic 1920s 1922 The 18th of October the British Broadcasting Company BBC is formed The 14th of November first BBC broadcasts from London station 2LO The 15th of November first broadcasts from Birmingham station 5IT and Manchester station 2ZY the 24th of December first broadcast from Newcastle upon Tyne station 5NO.1923 the 8th of January first outside broadcast the British National Opera Company's production of the Magic Flute from Covent Garden the 18th of January the UK Postmaster General grants the BBC a license to broadcast the 13th of February first broadcast from Cardiff station 5WA the 6th of March, first broadcast from Glasgow, station 5 SC. The 6th of June, Edgar Wallace makes a report on the Derby, thus becoming the first British radio sports reporter. The 28th of September, first publication of the Radio Times listings magazine, Price 2D. The 10th of October, first broadcast from Aberdeen, station 2 BD. The 17th of October, first broadcast from Bournemouth, station 6 BM. The 16th of November, first broadcast from Sheffield, Relay Station 2 FL.1924. The 28th of March, first broadcast from Plymouth, Relay Station 5 PY. The 23rd of April, first broadcast by King George V, opening the British Empire Exhibition at Wembley Stadium. The 1st of May, first broadcast from Edinburgh, Relay Station 2 EH. The 11th of June, first broadcast from Liverpool, Relay Station 6 LV. The 8th of July, first broadcast from Leeds and Bradford, Relay Station 2 LS. The 21st of July, an experimental long wave station 5XX is established at the Kelmsford Works of the Marconi Company. The 15th of August, first broadcast from Kingston upon Hull, Relay Station 6 Kilo Henrys. The 14th of September, first broadcast from Belfast, Station 2 BE. The 16th of September, first broadcast from Nottingham, Relay Station 5 NG. The 21st of October, first broadcast from Stoke on Trent, Relay Station 6 ST. The 12th of November, first broadcast from Dundee, Relay Station 2 DE. The 12th of December, first broadcast from Swansea, Relay Station 5 SX.1925. The 27th of July, Long Wave Station 5XX moves from Kelmsford to Daventry and becomes the first British radio station to achieve near national coverage, the first step in the establishment of the BBC National Program. 1926. The 4th of May, the general strike begins. The BBC broadcasts five news bulletins a day as no newspapers and radio times are published. 1927. The 1st of January, the British Broadcasting Company becomes the British Broadcasting Corporation, when it is granted a royal charter. Sir John Reith becomes the first Director General. The 15th of January, first live sports broadcast on the BBC. The Rugby Union International England v Wales is commented on by Teddy Wakelam. The 22nd of January, first live football match broadcast, featuring Arsenal's home league fixture against Sheffield United from Highbury. January, first BBC reference library established by Florence Milnes. March, the BBC coat of arms is adopted. The 7th of July, Christopher Stone presents a record program, becoming the first British disc jockey. The 21st of August, the first high-powered regional station, 5 gigabytes, forerunner of the Midland Regional Program, opens at Daventry. 1928. The 2nd of January, the first edition of the Daily Service is broadcast. It was originally called A Short Religious Service but was renamed the Daily Service in July. 1929. The 20th of August, first transmissions of John Logie Baird's experimental 30 line television system. Topic: 1930s. 1930 
The 9th of March, the majority of the BBC's existing radio stations are regrouped to form the BBC National Programme and the BBC Regional Programme. The 14th of July, transmission of the first experimental television play, The Man with the Flower in His Mouth. The 30th of September, number of radio licenses reaches 12 million, or roughly every second home in the country. 0.1931. The 2nd of June, first live outside broadcast with transmission of the Derby. 0 0.1932. The 15th of March, the first radio broadcast is made from Broadcasting House. The 15th of May, Broadcasting House, the BBC's headquarters and home to its main radio studios, is officially open. The 22nd of August, the first experimental television broadcast is made from Broadcasting House. The 19th of December, the Empire Service, precursor of the World Service, launches broadcasting on shortwave from Daventry's Borough Hill. The 25th of December, King George V becomes the first monarch to deliver a Christmas Day message by radio on the Empire Service. 1933. No events. 1934. No events. 1935. No events. 1936. The 2nd of November, the BBC opens the world's first regular high definition television service from Alexandra Palace. 1937. The 24th of April, the very first children's television show for the children. The 12th of May, first use of TV outside broadcast van to cover the procession that followed the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. The 21st of June, the BBC broadcasts television coverage of the Wimbledon Tennis Championships for the first time. The 16th of September, the BBC makes the world's first live television broadcast of a football match, a specially arranged local mirror match derby fixture between Arsenal and Arsenal reserves. 1938. The 3rd of January, the BBC begins broadcasting its first foreign language radio service in Arabic. The 30th of April, the BBC broadcasts television coverage of the FA Cup for the first time. The 27th of September, start of the European service on radio, broadcasting in French, German and Italian. Portuguese and Spanish are added before the start of the Second World War. 1939. Creation of BBC monitoring. The 1st of September, the BBC television service is suspended, about 20 minutes after the conclusion of a Mickey Mouse cartoon Mickey's Gala premiere, owing to the imminent outbreak of the Second World War and amid fears that the VHF transmissions would act as perfect guidance beams for enemy bombers attempting to locate central London. Additionally, the service's technicians and engineers will be needed for such war efforts as the development of radar. On radio, the national and regional programs are combined to form a single home service. Topic: 1940s. 1940. The 7th of January, start of the BBC Forces program on radio, precursor of the post-war light program. The 11th of May, the BBC starts a news service in Hindi. 1941. The BBC European service moves to Bush House in central London. 1942. The 29th of January, the first edition of Desert Island Discs is broadcast on the BBC Forces programme. 1943. No events. 1944. The 27th of February, BBC General Forces program replaces the BBC Forces program, also broadcast on shortwave. Point one nine four five. The 29th of July, regional radio programming resumes on the home service on the same medium wave frequencies as used pre-war by the regional program, while on the same day a new light program begins using the long wave frequency of the pre-war national program. The 9th of October, the first edition of Today in Parliament is broadcast. 1946. The 7th of June, BBC television broadcasts 405 lines resume after the war, including the coverages of cricket and Wimbledon tennis. One of the first programs shown is the Mickey Mouse cartoon from 1939. The 29th of September, the third program starts broadcasting on radio. 1947. The 7th of October, Adelaide Hall singing at a Radio Olympia variety show is the oldest surviving telerecorded program in Britain. 
the 9th of November, first use of telerecording of an outside broadcast, the service of remembrance from the cenotaph is televised live, and a telerecording shown that evening. The 20th of November, the wedding of Princess Elizabeth and Philip Mountbatten, Duke of Edinburgh, is televised by the BBC. It is watched by an estimated 400,000 viewers. 1948. The 29th of July, the London Olympic Games is televised. The 26th of December, the first wreath lecture is broadcast on radio. 1949. The 17th of December, for the first time, television extends beyond London when the Sutton Coldfield transmitter starts broadcasting, providing television reception across the Midlands. Topic: 1950s. 1950 The 21st of May, Lime Grove Television Studios open. The 27th of August, first live television from the European continent using BBC outside broadcast equipment. 1951 The 1st of January, first broadcast of The Archers, now the world's longest running soap opera. The 12th of October, television extends to the north of England following the switching on of the home Moss transmitting station. 1952. The 14th of March, television becomes available in Scotland for the first time following the switching on of the Kirk Oshots transmitting station. The 15th of August, television becomes available in Wales for the first time following the switching on of the Wenvo transmitting station. 1953. The 1st of May, television becomes available in Northern Ireland for the first time although initially from a temporary transmitter, brought into service in time for the Queen's coronation. A permanent mast at Devis is brought into service in 1955. The 2nd of June, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in Westminster Abbey is televised by the BBC and watched live by an estimated audience of 20 million people in the United Kingdom. The 11th of November, the first edition of Panorama is presented by Daily Mail reporter Pat Murphy. Panorama is the world's longest-running current affairs program and retains a peak time slot to this day. Watch with Mother, the iconic preschooler strand, debuts. It was replaced with the Seesaw branding in 1975.1954. The 11th of January, the very first in vision weather forecast is broadcast, presented by George Cowling. Previously, weather forecasts had been read by an off-screen announcer with a weather map filling the entire screen. The 5th of July, BBC newsreader Richard Baker reads the first televised BBC news bulletin. The 30th of December, the first BBC Sports Personality of the Year award takes place. 1955. The 2nd of May, the BBC begins broadcasting its radio service on VHF FM using the Rotham transmitter. September – Kenneth Kendall becomes the BBC's first Envision newsreader, followed by Richard Baker and Robert Dougal. The 10th of October – Alexandra Palace begins test transmissions of a 405-line color television service. 1956 The 28th of March – Television transmissions begin from the new Crystal Palace site in South London. 1957 the first broadcast of Test Match Special takes place, providing listeners with ball-by-ball -ball cricket commentary for the first time. The 24th of April, The Sky at Night, a monthly astronomy program presented by Sir Patrick Moore, is first broadcast. 24 September The first programs for schools are broadcast. September, the first broadcasts of regional news bulletins took place. 30 September, launch of Network 3, a strand of adult education broadcasts transmitted on the frequencies of the third program in the early part of weekday evenings. 25 December, first TV broadcast of the Queen's Christmas Day message. 1958. The BBC introduces a new three-box system logo. The logo featured slanted lettering within upright boxes. 5 May, first experimental transmissions of a 625-line television service. 10 October, first broadcast of the United Kingdom's multi-sport television show Grandstand. 16 October, first broadcast of the United Kingdom's longest-running children's television show Blue Peter. 1959. The BBC North East in Cumbria region is created with localised bulletins from Newcastle-upon-Tyne aired for the first time. 
Previously, the area was part of a pan-northern region based in Manchester. Topic: 1960s 1960 The 26th of March BBC television televises the Grand National for the first time The 19th of June Nan Winton becomes the BBC's first national female newsreader The 29th of June BBC television center opens The 8th of October the BBC television service is renamed as BBC TV.1961 No events.1962 the 4th of January, popular sitcom Steptoe and Son begins. The 27th of June, the Pilkington Committee on Broadcasting publishes its report into the future of UK broadcasting. Long its recommendations are the introduction of colour television licences, that Britain's third national television channel should be awarded to the BBC and that the BBC should extend its activities to the creation of local radio stations in order to prevent the introduction of commercial radio. 28 28th of August experimental stereo radio broadcasts begin the BBC runs a series of closed circuit experiments in local radio from a variety of locations across England point one nine six three the BBC logo had to improve to slant the boxes with the lettering the 30th of September a globe is used as the BBC television services logo for the first time the 23rd of November, first broadcast of the world's longest-running science fiction television program, Doctor Who. 1964. The 1st of January, first broadcast of pop and rock music television show Top of the Pops. The 20th of April, BBC Two starts broadcasting on 625 lines. The existing BBC television service is renamed BBC One. The 22nd of August, first broadcast of Top Flight Football Television Show Match of the Day. 1965. The 22nd of March, launch of the daytime BBC music program on the frequencies of Network 3, the third program. The 1st of May, the General Overseas Service is renamed the BBC World Service. The 10th of October, a new service for Asian immigrants begins broadcasting. The programming consists of a weekly television and radio program broadcast on Sunday mornings. 1966. The 17th of April, the first regular stereo radio transmissions begin from the Rotham transmitter. A government white paper paves the way for the launch of a small number eight of two-year experimental BBC local radio stations. 1967. The 25th of June, the first worldwide live satellite program, Our World, featuring the pop band, The Beatles, is televised. The 1st of July, regular color TV transmissions 625 lines begin on BBC Two, starting with the Wimbledon Tennis Championships. The 30th of September, BBC Radio One is launched, as a response to the threat from pirate radio station broadcasts of popular music. At the same time, the light program, the third network, Network 3, the third program, and the home service are renamed Radios 2, 3 and 4 respectively. The 23rd of October, service information is broadcast for the first time. The 8th of November, the BBC launches its first local radio station when BBC Radio Leicester launches. The 15th of November, BBC Radio Sheffield launches. The 22nd of November, BBC Radio Merseyside launches. The 2nd of December, BBC Two becomes the first television channel in Britain to broadcast in colour. 1968. The 31st of January, BBC Radio Nottingham launches. The 14th of February, BBC Radio Brighton launches. The 14th of March, BBC Radio Stoke launches. The 25th of March, BBC Regional Television from Leeds began and the first edition of Look North is broadcast. Previously, the Yorkshire area had been part of a wider north region based in Manchester. The 24th of June, BBC Radio Leeds launches. The 3rd of July, BBC Radio Durham launches. The 31st of July, the first episode of Dad's Army is broadcast. BBC Radio Durham launches point one nine six nine. The tenth of July, the BBC publishes a report called Broadcasting in the Seventies, 
Proposing the reorganization of programs on the national networks and replacing regional broadcasting on BBC Radio 4 with BBC Local Radio. The 9th of September, the first edition of Nationwide is broadcast. 19 to 20 September, BBC News relocates from Alexandra Palace in North London to BBC Television Centre in West London. The 15th of November, BBC One starts broadcasting in colour, simultaneous with rival ITV. First appearance of the Mirror Globe, coloured blue on black. BBC Local Radio is made permanent after the two-year experiment is judged to have been a success. 1970s 1979 BBC Local Radio stations launch, BBC Radio Newcastle the 2nd of January, BBC Radio Manchester the 10th of September, BBC Radio Bristol September, BBC Radio London the 6th of October, BBC Radio Oxford the 29th of October, BBC Radio Birmingham the 9th of November, BBC Radio Medway the 18th of December, BBC Radio Solent the 31st of December and BBC Radio Teesside the 31st of December the 4th of April BBC Radio's sports coverage transfers from BBC Radio 3 to BBC Radio 2 the 14th of September Robert Dougal presents the first edition of the BBC 9 o'clock news the program launched in response to ITN's news at 10 was controversially moved to 10 p.m. in 2000.1971 the BBC logos boxes rounds off the corners and increases the spaces the first programs for the Open University are broadcast. The 26th of January, BBC Radio Blackburn launches. The 25th of February, BBC Radio Humberside launches. The 29th of April, BBC Radio Derby launches. Point one nine seven two. The 4th of April, the first edition of Newsround is broadcast. The 25th of August, when the government restricted the BBC to 20 local radio stations, the corporation responds by closing BBC Radio Durham. Its resources are transferred to Carlisle where BBC Radio Carlisle, now BBC Radio Cumbria, was formed. The 2nd of October, the first edition of daytime lunchtime magazine programme Pebble Mill at 1 is broadcast. The 4th of November, radios 2 and 4 begin broadcasting in stereo in South East England. Stereo was rolled out to the rest of the country over subsequent years. 1973 The 4th of January, the pilot episode of Last of the Summer Wine airs. The regular series, which begins on 12 November, becomes the longest running sitcom in the world, running for 37 years. 10 September, Newsbeat Bulletins air on BBC Radio 1 for the first time. The 24th of November, BBC Radio Carlisle launches. 1974 The 1st of April, BBC Radio Teesside is renamed BBC Radio Cleveland. The 23rd of September, Teletext service CFAX goes live. December, the BBC One Mirror Globe changes colour from blue on black to yellow on blue. 1975 The 1st of January, BBC Radio Ulster is launched. 1976 September, the credits of each programme produced by the BBC reveals the copyrighted years in Roman numerals for the first time. 1977 The 3rd of January, BBC Radio Cymru is launched. May, BBC Radio Orkney and BBC Radio Shetland launch as opt-out stations from BBC Radio Scotland. The 19th of October, the first edition of a new weekly magazine programme for Asian women, Garbar, is broadcast. The programme had only been intended to run for 26 weeks but continued for around 500 weeks, finally ending in April 1987. The 25th of December, the Morecambe & Wise Christmas show on BBC One attracts an audience of more than 28 million, one of the highest ever in UK television history. 1978 The BBC organises its first Young Musician of the Year competition. The 24th of May, Nationwide airs the famous Skateboarding Duck Report. The 23rd of November, all BBC national radio stations change their medium or long wave transmission wavelength as part of a plan for BBC AM broadcasting in order to improve national AM reception, and to conform with the Geneva Frequency Plan of 1975. Radio 1's transmission wavelength is moved from 247 meters (1214 kHz) to 275 and 285 meters (1053 and 1089 kHz) medium wave. 
Radio 2's wavelength is moved from 1,500 meters (200 kilohertz) long wave to 433 and 330 meters (693 and 909 kilohertz) medium wave. Radio 3 is moved from 464 meters (647 kilohertz) to 247 meters (1,215 kilohertz) medium wave. Radio 4 is moved from various medium wavelengths to 1,500 meters (200 kilohertz) long wave. The shipping forecast transfers from BBC Radio 2 to BBC Radio 4 so that the forecast can continue to be broadcast on long wave. The Radio 4 UK theme is used for the first time to coincide with the network becoming a fully national service for the first time and to underline this the station officially becomes known as Radio 4 UK, a title that remains until mid-1984. November – Due to Radio FAS transfer from medium wave to long wave, BBC Radio Scotland and BBC Radio Wales launch as full-time stations on Radio FAS former Scottish and Welsh medium wave opt-out wavelengths of 370 metres 810 kilohertz and 340 metres 882 kilohertz respectively, albeit initially with very limited broadcast hours due to very limited coverage of BBC Radio 4 on FM in both countries. 21 to 22 December the BBC is crippled by its most famous 24 hour strike which leads to record viewing figures for ITV.1979 the 27th of January BBC Radio 2 closes down for the last time the 1st of March BBC 2 unveils its computer generated ident the first computer generated ident in the world the second such ident is unveiled by US broadcaster NBC the 27th of August, the murder of Lord Mountbatten by the IRA sets a record audience of 26 million for a news bulletin. Strike action at ITN led to the record viewing figures. The 11th of September, BBC Radio Foil launches as an opt-out station from BBC Radio Ulster. The 25th of September, the first edition of Question Time is broadcast. Topic 1980s 1980 The 28th of January, Newsnight is launched. February, BBC Radio Decide is launched as an opt-out service from BBC Radio Wales. March, the very first in Vision CFAX transmissions are broadcast. Three 30-minute transmissions are aired at various points during weekday daytime downtime. Summer, due to the continued expansion of BBC local radio, regional opt-out programming on BBC Radio 4 ends, apart from in the southwest as this is now the only part of England still without any BBC local station. The 8th of September, Watchdog is launched as a weekly slot on BBC One's news magazine program nationwide. The 11th of September, BBC Radio Norfolk launches. September – Regional peak time continuity on BBC One ends and with it the weeknight close down regional news bulletin. The 11th of November – BBC Radio Lincolnshire launches. The 21st of November – The Charity Appeal Children in Need is launched. 1981 The 17th of May – Sunday Grandstand launches. It broadcasts during the summer months on BBC Two. The 4th of July – BBC Radio Blackburn expands to cover all of Lancashire and is renamed accordingly. Also in 1981 BBC Radio Birmingham expands to cover the West Midlands, South Staffordshire, North Worcestershire and North Warwickshire and is relaunched as BBC WM. The 29th of July, The Wedding of Charles, Prince of Wales and Lady Diana Spencer is produced by BBC Television and Radio with an audience of 750 million viewers and listeners in over 60 countries. Welsh actor Richard Burton and Scottish writer, actor and royal expert Tom Fleming are among the commentators. Autumn BBC Micro is produced for BBC Computer Literacy Project. The 4th of September, the final edition of the Midday News is broadcast. The 5th of September, the BBC One Mirror Globe changes colour from yellow on blue to green on blue. The 7th of September, News Afternoon is launched as a 30-minute lunchtime news program, replacing the much shorter Midday News. October, BBC Radio Decide is expanded to cover all of North East Wales and is renamed BBC Radio CLWYD. The 23rd of October, the last ever teatime block of open university programmes are transmitted. 
From the 1982 season, only a single open university program is aired at 5.10 p.m., ahead of the start of the channel's evening programs. 1982 March, the BBC proposes to launch a satellite television service following the corporation being awarded two of the five DBS satellite channels. 15 and 16 March, BBC Local Radio starts broadcasting to the Channel Islands when BBC Radio Guernsey and BBC Radio Jersey launch. The 1st of May, BBC Radio Cambridgeshire launches. The 25th of May, BBC Radio Carlisle expands to cover all of Cumbria and is renamed accordingly and as part of the expansion, BBC Radio Furness launches as an opt-out service. The 20th of June, the BBC relaunches its Sunday morning programme for the Asian community when Asian magazine replaces APNA Hai Gar Samajie which had been on air since 1968. September, the BBC World Service becomes available to UK listeners for the first time, albeit only in South East England. The 1st of October, after 32 years on air, Listen with Mother is broadcast on BBC Radio 4 for the final time. 1 November, BBC produced Welsh language programming is transferred from BBC One to the new S4C channel. 23 December, service information is broadcast for the final time. 31 December, the last remaining opt-out regional programming on BBC Radio 4 ends when the final edition of Morning Southwest is broadcast, ahead of the launches of BBC Radio Devon and BBC Radio Cornwall. 1983 January, BBC One starts broadcasting a full afternoon service, consisting of regional programmes, repeats and old feature films. 17 January, Breakfast Time, the UK's first national breakfast television service, is launched, ahead of the ITV franchise TVM, which follows on 1 February. BBC Radio Devon and BBC Radio Cornwall launch Late February, early March, BBC One begins broadcasting a 30-minute CFAX slot prior to the start of Breakfast Time. It is called CFAX AM. It is first mentioned in the Radio Times on 21 March. The 18th of April, BBC Radio Gwent launches as an opt-out service from BBC Radio Wales. The 2nd of May, from today pages from CFAX is broadcast during all daytime downtime although BBC Two continues to fully close down for four hours after play school. The broadcasts are still known as CFAX and Vision and were not listed in the Radio Times until 7 January 1984 when they became known as Pages from CFAX. The 2nd of July, BBC Radio Medway is expanded to cover all of the County of Kent and is renamed accordingly. The 4th of July, BBC Radio York launches on a permanent basis. The station had been on air briefly the previous May to cover the visit to York of Pope John Paul II. 5 August, the final edition of Nationwide is broadcast. 16 September, BBC Two closes down during the day for the final time. All future daytime downtime is filled by pages from CFAX. 19 September, programs for schools and colleges are transferred to BBC Two and an all-day educational strand called Daytime on Two is launched. Consequently, the morning broadcast of Play School transfers to BBC One. The 22nd of October, BBC Radio Brighton expands to cover all of Sussex and is renamed accordingly. The 24th of October, 60 Minutes launches as the new evening news program to replace Nationwide. Autumn, shortly after the Home Secretary announced that the three remaining satellite channels would be given to the Independent Broadcasting Authority EBA to allow the private sector to compete against the BBC, the BBC starts talking with the EBA about a joint project to help cover the cost. The government subsequently gives permission and a consortium emerges consisting of the BBC, Granada, Anglia Television, Virgin, Thorne Emmy, Pearson Longman and Consolidated Satellite Broadcasting. The BBC holds a 50% stake in the consortium. 1984. The BBC conducts five trials of citywide community stations in Greater Manchester. Each trial lasts for a few weeks and was on air for a few hours each day, opting out of BBC Radio Manchester. The experiment has not been repeated. The 27th of July, the final edition of 60 Minutes is broadcast. The 3rd of September, first broadcast of the 6 o'clock news on BBC One. The program continues to this day. The 5th of October, the last ever Teatime Open University program is broadcast on BBC Two. 
However open university programs continue to be shown on BBC Two on weekday lunchtimes on an ad hoc basis until 1988. The 8th of October, BBC Two launches a full afternoon service, consisting of repeats of Dallas and old feature films. The 18th of November, the BBC launches its first Sunday lunchtime political interview show, called This Week, Next Week. It is replaced in 1988 by On the Record. December, BBC One stops broadcasting a late-night news summary. 1985. The 3rd of January, the last day of transmission using the 405 line system. The 7th of January, the BBC ends its experiment with afternoon broadcasting and from this date afternoon pages from CFAX is shown on BBC One between the end of lunchtime programmes and the start of children's programmes, and on BBC Two CFAX pages are shown continuously between 9am and 5.25pm apart from when daytime on two is in season and when sporting events are being shown. The 23rd of January, television coverage of proceedings in the House of Lords begins. The 18th of February, BBC One is given a major relaunch, along with the introduction of a new ident, the COW computer-originated world. Also, computerized weather maps were used for the first time for all weather forecasts. Prior to this date, computerized maps had only been used during breakfast time. The 19th of February, EastEnders premieres on BBC One. March, the charity appeal comic relief is launched. The 23rd of April, BBC Radio Shropshire launches. May, the consortium which has been planning to launch satellite television in the UK, of which the BBC is part, collapses on costs grounds. The 24th of June, BBC Radio Bedfordshire launches. The 13th of July, Live Aid is broadcast to the world on BBC One and BBC Radio One, the first broadcast of its kind. 2 September, a regional news bulletin following the 9 o'clock news is launched. 9 September, the weekday afternoon block of children's programming is rebranded as Children's BBC, and for the first time the children's block has dedicated idents and an Envision presenter. Previously children's programming had been introduced by BBC One's team of regular duty announcers. 1 October, BBC Radio Nan Gadiel launches .1986. The 30th of March, BBC Two receives a new look with the word two. The 1st of April, all commercial activities of the BBC are now handled by BBC Enterprises Limited. The 24th of October, the final edition of News Afternoon is broadcast. The 27th of October, BBC One starts a full daytime television service. Among the new programs is a new lunchtime news bulletin, the One O'clock News. The program continues to this day. Before today, excluding sport and special events coverage, BBC One had closed down at times during weekday daytime, broadcasting trade test transmissions and, from May 1983, pages from CFAX. BBC Two also expands its programming hours, providing a full afternoon service but it wasn't until the end of the decade that BBC Two was on air all day every day. The 5th of November, BBC Essex launches. 8 8th of December, 6 weeks after launching its daytime service, BBC TV starts broadcasting hourly news summaries. Morning bulletins are shown on BBC One and early afternoon summaries at 2 p.m., 3 p.m. and 3:50 p.m. are shown on BBC Two. Each bulletin is followed by a weather forecast. The 28th of December, after more than 20 years, BBC Radio's national program for the Asian community, APNA Hai Gar Samajie, Make Yourself at Home, and broadcast on Sunday morning on BBC Radio 4, ends. 1987. The BBC World Service launches BBC 648 from the Orfordness transmitting station. The service provides a tailor-made service for Northern Europe featuring some French and German programming programs interwoven with the main output in English. The 22nd of June, the BBC's lunchtime children's program moves from BBC One to BBC Two. It is shown slightly earlier, at 1.20pm. The 25th of July, the first edition of a new weekly program for the Asian community, Network East, is broadcast. It replaces Asian Magazine and Garbar, which had ended three months earlier. The 31st of October, BBC Radio 1 starts broadcasting on VHF in London. 1988. 
The 11th of April, BBC Somerset Sound launches as an opt-out station from BBC Radio Bristol. The 1st of September, BBC External Services is renamed the World Service. Radio 1 starts regular broadcasts on VHF, FM in Scotland, Northern England, the Midlands, and South Wales, Avon and Somerset. FM coverage is rolled out across the rest of the UK in stages over the next few years. 20 September, the Radio Data System RDS launches, allowing car radios to automatically retune, display station identifiers and switch to local travel news. 3 October, BBC Radio Gloucestershire launches. 7 October, BBC Radio London stops broadcasting and is replaced on 25 October by BBC GLR. 30 October, the Asian Network launches as a 70 hours a week service on the MW transmitters of BBC Radio Leicester and BBC WM. October, BBC GMR replaces BBC Radio Manchester. Autumn, the BBC takes its first tentative steps into later closedowns, previously weekday programmes ended no later than 12.15 am and weekend broadcasting had finished by 1.30 am. Regular late evening weeknight programming starts to appear on BBC local radio. The programming tends to be regional rather than local with the same programme networked on several local stations. Consequently, stations are now starting to provide local, regional programming on weeknights until midnight. Previously stations had ended local programming by mid-evening, handing over to BBC Radio 2 until the following morning. 1989. The 14th of February, BBC Hereford and Worcester launches. The 4th of March, BBC Wiltshire Sound launches. The 1st of April, the BBC launches BBC TV Europe, a subscription-based pan-European television station. May, the BBC Night Network is launched on the BBC's six local radio stations in Yorkshire and North East England. The service broadcasts seven nights a week from 6.05 p.m. 6 p.m. at the weekend until 12 midnight. Two years later the service is expanded to include the BBC's four stations in the northwest. 19 June, for the first time, BBC Two broadcasts during the morning when not showing daytime on two. Programs begin at 10 a.m., as opposed to lunchtime. 29 September, the final edition of Breakfast Time is broadcast. 2 October, the first edition of BBC Breakfast News is broadcast. 21 November, television coverage of proceedings in the House of Commons begins. Topic 1990s. 1990. The 17th of January, BBC CWR launches. The 25th of March, at 7 p.m., BBC Radio 2 becomes available on FM 24/7 for the first time after the final ever borrow of its FM frequencies by BBC Radio 1. The 12th of April, BBC Radio Suffolk launches. 27 August, BBC Radio 5 begins broadcasting on BBC Radio 2's MW frequencies. BBC Radio's sports coverage transfers to the new station from Radio 2 and educational and children's programmes transfer from Radio 4 FM. Consequently, BBC Radio 2 becomes the first national BBC station to broadcast exclusively on FM and the full BBC Radio 4 schedule becomes available on FM for the first time. 5 September, the new BBC building at White City opens. 1991. The 7 of January, the BBC East Midlands region is created and the first edition of East Midlands Today is broadcast. The 16 of January, Radio 4 News FM starts Gulf War broadcasts on BBC Radio 4 FM frequencies. The 16th of February, BBC One and BBC Two receive new idents generated from Laserdisc, BBC One with a one encased in a swirling globe, and BBC Two with 11 idents based around the numeral two. The 2nd of March, Radio 4 News FM closes and BBC Radio 4 returns to FM. The 11th of March, the BBC launches its first global television station, BBC World Service Television. In Europe it replaces BBC TV Europe. March, after nearly eight years on air, BBC Radio Gwent closes. 
The 1st of April, the BBC becomes the statutory authority for issuing television licenses, assuming the responsibility of license fee collection and enforcement. The 15th of April, the World Service Television News Service is launched. Unlike World Service Radio which is funded by direct grant from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, WSTV is commercially funded and carries advertising, which means that it cannot be broadcast in the UK. 1 May, BBC Radio 1 begins 24-hour transmission, but only on FM, Radio 1's MW transmitters still close down overnight, between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. 31 July, the BBC's Lime Grove Studios close. The 31st of August, BBC Television starts officially broadcasting in stereo using the NICAM system. Some transmitters had been broadcasting in stereo since 1986, but these were classified as tests. The 16th of September, the main BBC Radio 4 service moves from long wave to FM as FM coverage has now been extended to cover almost all of the UK. Radio 4 didn't become available on FM in much of Scotland and Wales until the start of the 1990s. Opt-outs are transferred from FM to long wave. The 14th of October, World Service TV launches its Asian service. The 14th of November, BBC Radio Surrey launches Point 1992. The 21st of January, BBC Select is launched as an overnight subscription service and BBC Radio Berkshire launches. The 29th of February, BBC Radio 3 ceases broadcasting on medium wave AM. The 17th of April, BBC Radio Nottingham ends transmissions on one of its MW transmitters. BBC Radio Cleveland, BBC Radio Northampton and BBC Radio Oxford also stop broadcasting on MW. The 1st of November, the satellite TV channel UK Gold, run by the BBC with Thames Television, starts broadcasting. BBC local radio stations start broadcasting the BBC World Service rather than BBC Radio 2 when not on air. 1993. The 5th of April, BBC Radio Bedfordshire expands to cover the counties of Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire and is renamed BBC Three Counties Radio. The 13th of April, for the first time all BBC news programmes have the same look following a relaunch of all of the main news bulletins. The 26th of April, BBC Dorset FM launches as an opt-out service from BBC Radio Devon. Autumn, BBC GLR stops broadcasting on MW. Also, BBC GMR stops broadcasting on MW. October, BBC Radio CLWYD closes, although news opt-outs continue until 2002.1994. The 27th of March, BBC Radio 5 ends transmission. The 28th of March, BBC Radio 5 Live, a dedicated news and sport network, starts round-the-clock broadcasts. The 13th of April, first BBC website created for the BBC Two series The Net. The 1st of July, BBC Radio 1 ceases broadcasting on medium wave AM at 9 AM. July – Arabic television television service launched with funding from the Saudi Arabian Mawarid Group. The 1st of August – BBC Radio Surrey and BBC Radio Sussex merge to form BBC Southern Counties Radio. The 19th of September – The BBC launches a weekday lunchtime business, personal finance and consumer news programme. Called Working Lunch, the program is broadcast on BBC Two for 42 weeks each year. 1995 The 16th of January, BBC World Service Television was renamed as BBC World. It was launched as an international free-to-air news channel on the 26th of January at 1900 Greenwich Mean Time. The 30th of January, BBC Prime launches as a local encrypted variety and light entertainment channel by BBC Enterprises. BBC Enterprises, the BBC's commercial arm, is restructured as BBC Worldwide Limited. The 9th of October, BBC Learning Zone is launched. BBC Radio CWR closes as a standalone station and becomes an opt-out of BBC Radio WM. 1996. The 9th of April, BBC Radio Oxford and BBC Radio Berkshire merge to form BBC Thames Valley FM. Also in early 1996 BBC Dorset FM closes and its frequency is used to relay BBC Radio Solent. The 21st of April, Arabic television closes down when the Saudi backer pulls out following a row over coverage of the execution of a princess accused of adultery. 
June – Radio 1 starts live streaming on the Internet. The 7th of June, the BBC is restructured by the Director General, John Burt. In the new structure BBC Broadcast will commission programmes, and BBC Production will make them. The 13th of October, BBC Television shows live Formula One for the final time following ITV's acquisition of the rights from 1997 onwards Formula One returns to the BBC in 2009. The BBC also loses the rights to the FA Cup and England Football Internationals to ITV and England Rugby Union Internationals to Sky at around the same time, and later loses the rights to English Cricket to Channel 4. The 4th of November, the Asian Network expands into a full-time station when it increases the number of hours on air from 80 hours a week to 126 hours a week 18 hours a day. The station, which broadcasts on the MW frequencies of BBC Radio Leicester and BBC WM, is renamed BBC Asian Network. Consequently, radios Leicester and WM become FM-only stations. The 29th of December, what was billed as the last ever episode of Only Fools and Horses before the new millennium is watched by 24.35 million viewers, the largest ever TV audience for a sitcom. 1997 The BBC broadcasts the much-praised Perfect Day corporate advertisement, featuring 27 artists singing lines of Lou Reed's original. The song later becomes a fundraising single for children in need. 28 February, the BBC sells its transmitters and transmission services to Castle Transmission Services for £244 million, to help fund its plans for the digital age. March, the BBC and Flextech agree on a deal to provide several BBC branded channels, BBC Showcase, for entertainment, BBC Horizon, for documentaries, BBC Style, for lifestyle, BBC Learning, for schools, and BBC Arena, for the arts, plus three other channels, BBC Catch Up, for repeats of popular programmes within days of their original transmission, a dedicated BBC Sport Channel and a TV version of Radio 1. 6 September, the funeral of Diana, Princess of Wales is broadcast on BBC Radio and Television and aired to over 200 countries worldwide. Nearly 3 billion viewers and listeners watch the ceremonies. In the US, BBC's coverage is aired on A&E and C-SPAN cable networks. David Dimbleby hosts the coverage with Tom Fleming narrating the service inside Westminster Abbey, 4 October, current corporate identity adopted. At a reported cost of £5 million the new logo was introduced due to the increase in digital services, as it is designed to be more visible at small size it is better suited for use in websites and on-screen dogs. On-screen identities changed, with BBC One adopting the balloon idents, and BBC Two retaining their twos used from 1991, with new legend. 4 November, BBC News Online, a web-based news service, is launched. 8 November, BBC One closes down for the very last time as from the following day, BBC News 24 broadcasts during the channel's overnight hours. 9 November, BBC News 24, the corporation's UK television news service, is launched at 17.30. December, the BBC launches its online service BBC Online.1998. February, Sunday Grandstand becomes a year-round programme. Previously it had only broadcast between May and September. August, the BBC's domestic TV channels become available on Sky Digital's satellite service. An unintended consequence of this is that people in the rest of Europe can now watch BBC One and Two, using viewing cards from the UK, as the signal is encrypted for rights reasons. This applies even within the UK, people in England can now watch BBC channels from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, and vice versa. 23 September The BBC launches BBC Choice, its first new TV channel since 1964, available only on digital TV services. Following its purchase of the cable-only parliamentary channel, the BBC launches BBC Parliament on digital satellite and analogue cable with an audio feed of the channel on DAB. 15 November – Public launch of digital terrestrial TV in the UK. BBC Radio 5 Live replaces the BBC World Service as BBC Local Radio's overnight downtime filler. 1999 BBC 648, which provided French and German language content for Northern Europe from the Orfordness Transmitting Station, ends with the closure of the BBC's German service. The French for Europe service had closed in 1995.
Consequently, all programming from this transmitter was in English only. The 10th of May, BBC Network News relaunched with new music, titles and a red and ivory set. This design was used for the 25th of October relaunch of News 24, enhancing cross-channel promotion of the service. The 20th of May, the BBC's digital teletext service starts. The 1st of June, BBC Knowledge starts broadcasting on digital services. The 20th of June, the BBC broadcasts live cricket for the final time when it shows live coverage of the 1999 Cricket World Cup final, bringing to an end of 60 years of continuous cricket coverage on the BBC. The terrestrial rights transfer to Channel 4. Topic: 2000s. 2000 The 14th of February BBC Thames Valley FM closes and BBC Radio Oxford and BBC Radio Berkshire relaunches separate stations although Radio Berkshire operates as an opt-out service of Radio Oxford The 25th of March BBC GLR closes and is relaunched as BBC London Live 94.9 the 20th of May, due to the loss of many major sports rights in recent years, the BBC does not broadcast this week's edition of Grandstand. ITV was showing the FA Cup final. Apart from when Christmas Day fell on a Saturday or a major national event taking place, this had been the first time that Grandstand had not been broadcast on a Saturday afternoon since the program's inception in 1958. The 15th of September, final edition of Breakfast News on BBC One and BBC News 24, the last conventional news broadcast in the morning. The 2nd of October, the first edition of BBC Breakfast is broadcast, the new morning show on BBC One and News 24 from 6 o'clock to 9.30, 9 o'clock on BBC News 24. The 13th of October, final edition of the BBC 9 o'clock news on BBC One. The 16th of October, the BBC 10 o'clock news launches on BBC One amid controversy, having been moved from 9 p.m. to cash in on the axing of ITN's news at 10 the previous year. The 16th of October, Oxfordshire, once part of the South East, becomes part of South Today. 2001. The 3rd of March, a bomb explodes outside Television Centre. The blast was later attributed to dissident Irish Republican terrorists and it is suggested the BBC Panorama programme which named individuals as participants in the OMA bomb was the motive. The 3rd of September, Kent and Sussex get their own news programme, South East Today. The 1st of October, BBC London is launched, replacing Newsroom South East. October, BBC Three Counties Radio launches opt-out programming for the County of Buckinghamshire. 5 5th of November, BBC Two W is launched, broadcasting on digital services in Wales on weekday evenings. The 19th of November, last showing of the then current BBC Two idents. These set of idents would have ended in 1997 with BBC One's ident change, but due to popularity, the 1991 idents continued only with a new BBC logo and some newer ident sets. The new idents were Ivory 2s, interacting in a yellow world, with Purple Box logo, the first BBC channel to have 1.2002. The 2nd of February, BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Extra is launched. The 11th of February, the CBBC and CBBS channels begin broadcasting. The 2nd of March, BBC 4 is launched at 1900 in a simulcast with BBC 2. It replaces BBC Knowledge. The 11th of March, BBC Six Music is launched. The 29th of March, BBC One rebrands with the controversial rhythm and movement idents, including dancers in red dancing in different locations. The red box logo was also used for these idents. For the first time in 39 years, a globe is not included in the presentation. The 16th of August, BBC Radio One Extra is launched. The 28th of October, BBC Asian Network launches as a national station. The 30th of October, BBC Parliament launches on digital terrestrial television, having previously only been available as an audio-only service. However capacity limitations mean that the picture is squeezed into just one quarter of the screen. The 11th of November. 
The first edition of East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire edition of BBC Look North is broadcast, while the Leeds-based Look North programme now covers West, North and South Yorkshire and the North Midlands. BBC Radio Swindon outputs from the renamed BBC Radio Wiltshire begin. 15 December, BBC Radio 4 Extra is launched as BBC 7.2003. 9 February, BBC 3 is launched at 1900 in a simulcast with BBC 2. It replaces BBC Choice. 8 December, BBC News 24 is relaunched with a new set and titles, as well as a new breaking news sting. Network news on BBC One and Two remains with the same titles though the set was redesigned in a similar style to that of the new News 24. 2004 The 28th of January, publication of the Hutton Inquiry, and subsequent resignation of the Chairman Gavin Davies, the 30th of January, resignation of the Director General, Greg Dyke. Mark Byford takes over as Acting Director General, the 16th of February, Network News titles are relaunched in the style of BBC News 24, introduced two months earlier. The 17th of May, appointment of Michael Grade as new Chairman, the 21st of May, appointment of Mark Thompson as new Director General, the 1st of October, BBC Technology, incorporating the BBC's Broadcast Engineering Division, is sold to Siemens Ag Business Services for approximately £200 million, and a £2 billion, 10-year outsourcing contract. 2005 The 20th of March, Mark Thompson announces staff of 27,000 to be cut by 3,780, the 26th of March, Doctor Who returns to the air, 16 years after the last full series was broadcast. The 23rd of May, over one third of staff join strike in response to job cuts, dropping programs. The 1st of August, BBC Broadcast, formerly Broadcasting and Presentation and responsible for the playout and branding of all BBC channels, is sold to Creative Broadcast Services, owned by the Macquarie Capital Alliance Group and Macquarie Bank. It is renamed Red Bee Media on 31 October, 3 November, BBC Coventry and Warwickshire returns as a standalone station. December, the Czech and Polish sections of the BBC World Service cease to exist. Eight other sections are to follow soon. 2006 the 3rd of April, BBC GMR changes its name back to BBC Radio Manchester. The 23rd of April, the Radio 4 UK theme is used for the final time. It is replaced by a news bulletin. The 27th of May, the BBC's first scheduled HD TV broadcast on BBC HD. The 14th of August, the one show is first broadcast on BBC One, initially as a four-week trial. It is seen as a modern-day version of highly popular series nationwide, with the programme resulting in popular journalism returning to BBC One's early evening schedule. The programme returned on a permanent basis the following July, 1 September, BBC Entertainment replaces BBC Prime in global markets. 7 October, BBC One rebrands from the Rhythm and Movement Idents to the current Circle Idents, which acts as a link to the classic globe icon used for almost 40 years and as a symbol of unity. 13 November, BBC Parliament broadcasts in full-screen format for the first time on the Freeview service, having previously only been available in quarter-screen format. The BBC eventually found the bandwidth to make the channel full-screen after receiving thousands of angry and perplexed emails and letters, not to mention questions asked by MPs in the Houses of Parliament itself. 28 November, resignation of Chairman Michael Grade, to join ITV. 1 December, BBC HD channel is officially launched after around 18 months of trial broadcasts. 31 December, the BBC's then current Royal Charter and Agreement expires. 2007 The 22nd of January, BBC News 24 is relaunched with new titles and new Astons. The 28th of January, the final edition of Grandstand is broadcast. The 18th of February, BBC Two rebrands from the Yellow Twos to the current window on the World Twos. July, BBC Knowledge launched as a global channel by BBC Worldwide. The 11th of August, BBC Radio Cleveland is rebranded as BBC Tees due to its broadcasting area no longer being associated with the name Cleveland. The 3rd of September, CBBC Identity relaunched, with its third marketing campaign since the launch of the CBBC channel. The 20th of October, BBC Switch, a teenage block of shows is launched to cater for the under-served 12 to 16-year-olds, launches. 
the 25th of December, BBC iPlayer, an online service for watching previously aired shows, is launched. 2008 the 22nd of January, BBC Three has its identity relaunched, showcasing new shows such as Lily Allen and Friends. The 11th of March, BBC Arabic Television launches. The 21st of April, BBC News 24 and BBC World are renamed BBC News and BBC World News, respectfully. The 19th of September, BBC Alba, a Scottish Gaelic language digital television channel, launched through a partnership between BBC and MG Alba. 2009. The 2nd of January, BBC Two W closes. The 14th of January, the BBC's Persian language TV channel is launched. The 30th of March, BBC Southern Counties Radio closes, resulting in the return of BBC Surrey and BBC Sussex as standalone separate stations. The 4th of April, BBC Radio Swindon, which had opted out of BBC Radio Wiltshire, is closed. The two stations are merged as BBC Wiltshire. Topic 2010s. 2010 The 19th of February, EastEnders celebrates 25 years with a special live edition, where the murderer of Archie Mitchell is revealed. Over 16 million viewers tuned in to find Stacey Slater to be the killer. The 30th of July, BBC Two broadcasts its final working lunch. The 3rd of November, BBC One HD, a high-definition simulcast of a national version of BBC One, is launched across all digital platforms. 2011. The 27th of March, due to budget cuts, transmission of the BBC World Service on 648 kHz MW ends. The transmissions, from the Orfordness Transmitting Station in Suffolk, had been on air since 1982 and had provided coverage of the World Service to much of Northern Europe. The 2nd of April, BBC Seven is relaunched as BBC Radio 4 Extra.2012 The 7th of March, Brighton moves from South Region, to Southeast Region, after the Meridian Digital switch over. May, BBC Somerset launches as a full-time station. The 12th of July, the BBC World Service relocates to Broadcasting House after 70 years at Bush House. The 27th of July to the 12th of August, the 2012 Summer Olympics take place and with the exception of news programming BBC One is devoted entirely to live coverage of the Games and BBC Radio 5 Live operates a temporary station 5 Live Olympics Extra, to provide additional coverage of the Games. 17 August, BBC Radio Kent, BBC Radio Lincolnshire, BBC Radio Merseyside and BBC Radio Nottingham stop broadcasting regular programmes on medium wave. It's part of a five-week trial to find out if listeners will miss or complain about the lack of AM services. At the end of the trial, the BBC decides that BBC Radio Nottingham's MW transmitter and Radio Kent's relay at Rusthal near Tunbridge Wells, will remain off-air. 17 September, George Entwistle is appointed as Director General. 3 October, broadcast of Exposure, the other side of Jimmy Seville which uncovered allegations of sexual abuse by Jimmy Savile. 23 October, the BBC's teletext service CFAX is switched off following all regions switching to digital broadcasting. The very last pages from CFAX transmission had taken place two days earlier. BBC One Northern Ireland commences broadcasting in HD. The 10th of November, George Entwistle resigns as Director General, to be replaced temporarily by Tim Davey. Entwistle's 54-day tenure as Director General is the shortest in the corporation's history. The 14th of November 90th anniversary broadcast at 1733. The 22nd of November, Tony Hall is announced as the new Director General, taking the post in March 2013. The 21st of December, CBBC and CBBS both air on BBC One for the last time. At the end of 2012 the BBC loses the rights to show horse racing. This brings to an end a relationship between the BBC and televised horse racing which dates back to the 1950s.2013 The 4th of January, CBBC and CBBS both air on BBC Two for the last time. 
The 7th of January, the debut of a national networked evening program on BBC local radio, hosted by former Classic FM presenter Mark Forrest. The show, introduced as part of cost-cutting measures, replaces all local programming, apart from local sport coverage. 14 January, BBC One Scotland commences broadcasts in HD. 29 January, BBC One Wales commences broadcasts in HD. 26 March, BBC Two commences broadcasting in HD following the closure of BBC HD. 31 March, BBC Television Centre closes in Shepherd's Bush with the majority of TV services moved to Broadcasting House in central London. 5 April, BBC Monitoring moves to licence fee funding. 8 July, after eight years, BBC Local Radio returns to Dorset when a breakfast show for the county, as an opt-out from BBC Radio Solent, is launched. 25 October, the BBC hosts 100 Women, a day of debate and discussion across radio, television and online featuring 100 women from around the world. 10 December, HD broadcasts begin for BBC Three, BBC Four, BBC News, CBBC and CBeebies.2014 The BBC broadcasts the much-praised, God Only Knows. Corporate advertisement, featuring 21 artists singing lines of the Beach Boys original. The song also became a fundraising single and an advertisement for BBC Music for the first time since Perfect Day in 1997 for children in need. The 6th of March, the BBC announced that BBC Three will become Internet only from February 2016, in an effort to save £90 million. Their plans were approved on 26 November 2015. 30 August, Rona Fairhead becomes the first woman to be appointed as chair of the BBC Trust. 2015. 6 October, after 27 years, the name BBC Radio London returns to the airwaves following a name change from BBC London 94.9.2016. 16 February, BBC Three closes as a linear channel and becomes an over-the-top internet television service although all of the long-form programmes commissioned for BBC Three are to be shown at a later date on BBC One. 19 19th of February, BBC Radio Bristol stops broadcasting on MW following the sale of the land on which the transmitter was located to developers. The 31st of March, BBC Three fully closes down on all digital television platforms. It had carried promotional information regarding the BBC Three internet service since the 16th of February. The 11th of April, CBBC extends its broadcast hours from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., using capacity which had previously been used by BBC 3.2017. The 22nd of February, plans are announced to launch a dedicated television channel for Scotland to replace the current BBC 2 Scotland opt-out. It would broadcast from 7 p.m. to midnight nightly, and feature a lineup composed entirely of Scottish programming, including a new hour-long 9 p.m. newscast that will be produced from Scotland. The 2nd of April, the BBC Trust is closed at the expiry of the 2007 Royal Charter, which had a 10-year lifespan. The trust is replaced by the BBC Board. 2018. The 15th of January, the MW transmissions of BBC Radio's Sussex, Surrey, Humberside, Wiltshire, Nottingham, Kent and Lincolnshire end and MW coverage for BBC Devon, Lancashire and Essex is reduced. Altogether a total of 13 MW transmitters are switched off. The 28th of January, after nearly 78 years on air, the Sunday hour is broadcast on BBC Radio 2 for the final time. The 8th of May, another long-running BBC Radio 2 programme ends when, ahead of schedule changes, The Organist entertains as broadcast for the final time after 49 years on air. The 12th of July, the BBC announces cutbacks to BBC Parliament. The channel will now close down in the weeks when no UK parliamentary bodies are in session and all programmes made especially for the channel will end. The 10th of October, the BBC announces it has reversed the planned cuts to the output of BBC Parliament, but warns of possible future cuts to other services in order to save £500 million before 2021-22. The 24th of October, the FM frequency of BBC Radio 3 at more than 30 relay transmitters in Wales is reallocated to BBC Radio Wales. 
Consequently, the reach of Radio Wales on FM will increase from 79% to 91%. 29 29th November, HD versions of BBC Two Wales and BBC Two Northern Ireland will start broadcasting. 2019. The 24th of February, the BBC is to launch a television channel for Scotland. Topic. See also. Timeline of BBC Local Radio. Timeline of BBC Radio 1 Timeline of BBC Radio 2 Timeline of BBC Radio 3 Timeline of BBC Radio 4 Timeline of BBC Radio 5 Live Early television stations BBC Archives <laughs>